Hello, Northeast Lake County. I'm Rob English, the president of Mount Dora Chamber of Commerce, and we're just excited to be bringing you another veteran video. I'm in the home of Glenn Christians, a Navy veteran. We're in honoring his 95th birthday as we talk about his service to our country in the Navy. And it was just, before we went on camera, I want you all to know this is an exciting story of Glenn. Glenn grew up in Iowa. You said on a 180-acre farm. That's about right. Yep. And then what age after graduating high school did you go into the Navy, Glenn? Well, I, I graduated in, uh, in May of 1942, and I went into the Navy in June of 1942. Okay, so you were 17. I was 17. Yes, sir. And where did you go to basic training? Where did you go? Yes, I went to the Naval Great Lakes facility. Okay. And did my training there. Yes, sir. Now, before we went on camera, this is real exciting, guys, because it was a quite a quite a venture, a year's adventure. Okay, your first sailing across the sea. You went. You started out. My first, my first trip out, after I got assigned to a a, a ship, and I, I, we went from New York down to we hugged the coast down to Guantanamo Bay. And from there we went to uh, Rio de Janeiro, and from there to Buenos Aires, and I remember that is highly unusual. Why were we there? I couldn't. <laughs> the, they were flying Nazi flags and Nazi banners all over the place. Uh, we spent some time there, and they were also server server. The Rio de Janeiro was was uh, servicing submar German submarines. Okay. So the submarines that sunk you were being serviced. Will be in their service. <laughs> that is funny. So that's where you set out to cross over. Yeah. Okay, and, and where were you headed to at the we, time of the... We were headed to to Cape Town, South Africa. All right. To Cape Town. And uh, we never quite made it. We were sunk about, t about 400 miles out of... Out of, out of Cape Town, spent five days in a lifeboat, which, by the way, there's no, the, the only water you had was what you caught from the rainwater, and there was no food. They had, they had on board the lifeboat emergency kits, fish hooks and line. <laughs> so, we, so we caught some fish, and we would try to eat the fish raw. That that didn't go over very well. <laughs> so what do you use for bait? I'm just curious. We didn't have any bait. You have any bait? Okay. All right. On the right. side, hope we hoped the fish would bite it. Uh huh. Uh, so we did that, and uh, we we somehow survived. We uh, had, and then about five days after we were in the lifeboat, we were picked up by a British man of war, and they took us. Back, they they took us into Cape Town, okay. South Africa. Okay. Now, before, so guys know the reason that the ship went down to South Africa, uh, South America, and crossed over toward Cape Town was. Glenn was telling me before we went on, if you did did the Northern Atlantic Sea Channels from New York across to England, that's where the U-boats were just taking our ships out like crazy. So that's the reason that they were crossing in the Southern uh, Southern Atlantic. But anyway, yeah, go ahead yeah, with your story. So you get you get yeah, into Cape Town. Get into Cape Town, and we were, we spent a little bit of time there. We had no clothing because it was all lost, uh, and so we. Uh, we were, were 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 given some some clothing, but it wasn't a regular issue. It was just stuff they had available, and uh, we were we, we were put on the ship, which was supposed to take us back eventually to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, where, which is where we were which is where we were assigned to be. Uh, we left Cape Town and uh, went up to India. And we, in India, we um, kept hauling stuff back and forth between various spots from uh, Calcutta, Karachi, and Bombay. And uh, while we were in India, the only air raid of World War II in India, I happened to be there, which is unfortunate. 
uh, it was, uh, but anyway, the, so all the natives went to the hills and they couldn't, <laughs> and when that, and that after they, they were there about two weeks before they'd come back to unload the ships. And, uh, and at that point we left there, finally after about, about three months in India, we left there and went down to Hobart, Australia. It's a small island off of the south of Australia. Okay. And, and that's where you crossed the Pacific then. You, you crossed uh, the yeah, Pacific, yeah. okay. And that's when we had, to, we had to cross the Pacific, which was a dangerous area because of the Japanese. And we um, finally got across the Pacific, over to South America, hugged the coast, up to, up through the we, all Canal. the way up to the uh, Panama Canal, mm -hmm. and then uh, from, from the Panama Canal, we hugged the coast going up to New York, and finally got there and took a, and they give us some, some a French a another sea bag full of clothes, and uh, we had some, some, some clean clothes and. And we were, and at that time, I, I was I was allowed to go home for a week, leave. Uh, I might mention that during the war, on the merchant ships, every merchant ship had about twenty naval people on board, twenty U.S. Navy people. Okay. They had merchant marine, uh -huh. uh, which which did the uh, the cargo and everything, and they also maintained the ship. But the Navy was there to to try to protect the ship mm -hmm. from being captured by uh, the Japanese or Germans or whatever it was. Right. Uh, and at, at that point, let's see, I'm back in New York again. On, I'm on leave. I get off of leave. I come back to Brooklyn Navy Yard, and I was reassigned then next time to go to 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 England. To Liverpool, England, with a with a with a convoy of merchant ships, went to. And, and and you said when they were crossing, they were crossing with like 80, 80 ships, sixty to eighty yeah, ships. Yeah, it, it did vary. Uh -huh. There'd be sometimes you'd have eighty, or you have a hundred, or you mm -hmm. or you might have fifty. You don't know for sure, but normally they would try to get at least at least fifty ships. Mm -hmm. And in they the were convoy. They were surrounded. You were telling me earlier yeah, on both sides. Con and what would happen? You'd have the the merchant ships in lines. The, the, they they would be ten wide, and then however deep it was for the number of merchant ships, and you would uh, cross the Atlantic, Northern Atlantic, which is very rough up there, very rough mm -hmm. seas. Uh, it, was, it was so bad the, the waves are so high, you can see a ship off on your left. Then all of a sudden it was it was it, 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 that that ship was gone. You didn't see it until it came back up from the wind wave. Wow! And water was cold, and you would cross there, and you would then from there we go into Liverpool, England, and uh, it takes us about a month to go across, about a month to unload, and about a month coming back. Glenn, what Glenn actually shared with me was on three different boats that were sunk, and the 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 most interesting one is the third one. Please share with us the third one when you were on the thirty foot boat in the Mediterranean. On the third one, I was assigned for some reason to the French naval uh, group, and uh, we were we, we 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 were to deliver arms and ammunition and explosives to the French underground. We had a mother ship which was out about 10 miles out in the Mediterranean. In, 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 yes, right, uh -huh. in, in the Mediterranean. And uh, we uh, would take orders. They had orders already been radioed in and take orders for supplies. And then we would, we would fill those supplies and drop them off at a certain spot where they wanted them dropped off. Mm -hmm. And you, this was on a thirty-foot boat that you yes, were going we, in on. Yes, we were. Okay. On a, yes, we were on about a thirty-foot boat, and there were three of us on board. There was two French sailors, and they were filling all the orders. And there was one American, which is me. Uh, and 
what happened is that while, while, while they were filling orders and I was watching out for mines and so forth, all of a sudden mines started popping up all over the place. German mines. And mines are very explosive, would totally destroy anything. We, uh, and we were, so I called it the two French seaters down from the deck below to come up and see what we had. We had a problem. We had mines all around us, and uh, we uh, had to decide if, if there was any way that we could escape or, or couldn't do. And you were all three standing on the front of the boat yeah. together, you yes, said? We, we, yes, we, we, we were all standing on the back of the boat. Oh, back of the boat, okay. Back of the boat, trying to figure out how to get out of it. We were, we were at shoulder to shoulder. And the next thing you know, uh, there was a big explosion, and, 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 and it knocked me out. And I, I, when I woke up, I, I, I was in the air about, I think about 20 feet above the boat. <laughs> I looked down, I could see the boat being destroyed. Then, then, I, then I, for some reason, I, I, I passed out again. And that was all I remember. Uh, when, I, when I woke up, it seemed like about a day later, um, the, the room I woke up in was all white, and I, and, and, and I did not know if I was alive or dead, or what was what the story was. Anyway, I laid there for a while. Finally, somebody came in the room and and uh, said, told me that I was alive. And I was getting along okay, and uh, they told me that the other two guys, which were standing right next to me on this boat before it blew up, were both killed, and I didn't even have a scratch, not even a small scratch. Wow. Now, in honor of Glenn being on that boat, serving our country, and taking in the guns to the uh, French resistance to the underground, the French government awarded uh, the French Legion of Honor medal to Glenn for his service there uh, to our country and to their country. And here is the actual medal. So this is the highest honor that the French government gives out as far as a medal. So Glenn, that uh, is fantastic and, and thank you for your service. Well, thank you. Well now, okay, so you get out of the service in 1946, the Navy, because you didn't want to do six years, which is what they were asking all of them to do when, when it, the war was over in Europe. So you come back to Iowa, and then you go to college where, you were saying? Yes, yes, yes I went to college at the Milwaukee School of Engineering uh -huh. in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I, uh, colleges normally are, are four years. But I finished in three. I went through the summer months, everything, okay. and I uh, got a, a my my a degree, a bachelor of science degree in electrical engineering. Okay, and, and then, then you I went, went on. And then I then went you went there. to your masters, yeah. And I went from there to was the University of Wisconsin, and I got a master's degree in electrical engineering. Okay, uh, and. And then I also studied mechanical engineering and got that. Okay. Uh, the uh, big, the big thing for the Navy for me, the Navy was very good to me. Give me the. They had me scared most of the time. I was scared of, uh, from the time I left the shore to the time I got someplace. But they gave me a good education and taught me the value of. Uh, Having a good education, and uh, they made it made my life much easier and much better. And with and, and with, with with all the benefits that they allowed at that time. Mm -hmm. Glenn went on to have a great, successful career with uh, Massey Ferguson, International yeah, Harvester, harvester and, equipment. Yep, yeah, as an engineer, quite a success story. Ended up when uh, he ended up in Atlanta 
and after his first wife passed away, that's when he left, met Melissa, and then they end up moving, of course, down here to us and honoring us as friends, honoring us with a great, great service in the military and a great, great career as an engineer. What a successful story. There's so much more to this man. I just hope that you get to know him better because as Glenn shared, the service is a great place for a young man or woman to start out and it just sets you on the right course for a great, great lifetime ahead and, and honoring, obviously, our country. I'm Rob English, the president of the Mount Dora Area Chamber of Commerce, and we will see you hopefully November 7th at Lake Reception as we honor all the branches of service uh, from 7.30 to 9 a.m. So if you haven't got your ticket, you can go to mountdora.com to purchase the ticket to come out. We're gonna have several hundred there to honor that day. And if you are a veteran, we invite you to go to mountdora.com. Your ticket is complimentary along with the guest. Again, join us next time. And Glenn, thank you so much for sharing thank your Thank you story. very much. Man. Okay, and happy 95th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, we appreciate it. You're welcome. I don't wanna live much longer, but it's yeah. pretty good.